One of the most important biointensive principles is seed saving, and specifically around the open pollinated seeds. Your quinoas, this is a black quinoa. Not many people are doing it anymore. And seed saving has always been something that gardeners have played an important part of. I mean, look through a seed catalog and see, you know, Grandma Jane's bib lettuce or, you know, Homer's beans. You know, they have someone's name attached to them because that person grew them out as a gardener and stewarded them. So the threats um, for seed saving is that we lose the diversity, you know, that we, we lose the knowledge of how to do it. It is essential for someone who is trying to empower themselves or their communities to have access to safe, clean, reliable seed. We're approaching a time where there is no hiding from climate change. There's no hiding from these fires that are happening, these droughts that are happening, you know, and every action is significant that we can take towards a more sustainable, equitable, peaceful future. The greatest thing about it is that we can all come together to make this happen. When we slow down and realize the value of the community around us and all the gifts that everyone has to offer, it's a totally different future with a totally different outcome. Um, gardening is one small part of that, but it's foundational to a sustainable food system, which ultimately is about peace. think of seeds as being, well, they've, they've now developed their seeds and there they are. But seeds are living all the time. From the moment a seed is born, it is living upon that albumen, that white, around it, and the air pocket is increasing. So that at a given moment of a given moon, when there is moisture, the moon will be able to split that shellac pod apart and release the embryo into the world. It's an incredible matter to be able to visualize. The garden must teach the gardener if those secrets are hidden in it. together to just talk and share the passion we have for seed and gardening and get supporting community around that. Just really hoping to support each other in this movement that has gone from almost nothing to kind of abundant. And um, I've been really realizing and feeling more and more the power of the work we're doing and the importance in this moment. It feels even more crucial than ever um, to care for seed, to value seed, to hold it is in the commons. Uh, let's go around. What I thought we'd do is start with um, just going on saying your name and what group you work with. Is anyone willing to start? And we'll just go around the circle from there. Well, I'm Matt, and I'm working with these wonderful people and all of you guys. Um, the Victor Gardens for Peace Project's trying to bring back gardening into the culture uh, as part of a sustainable food system. And we do a number of things, one of which is having a seed bank. And um, so all the work that everyone's engaged in here, we're always trying to get better and figure out better ways of cataloging things and getting things out and encouraging people to participate. So I'm really interested in learning you know, what you guys are doing and how we can improve over on the coast in Mendocino. So this is the, the gardens here at the Stanford Inn that we manage biointensively and they provide us the resources to run our programs and grow food here for the vegan restaurant and run our classes here and house internships and apprenticeships here and uh, have our seed bank here. So it's a symbiotic relationship that has formed the gardens here which were started over 30 years ago with a crazy plant. Hi Harriet. Good to see you. That's Harriet. She's one of the people who 
owned the inn before the Stanfords bought it in the late 70s and still lives on site here. I think it might work. This is the, what we call the cottage garden, which is a demonstration model of a complete diet with all the compost fertility and under a thousand square feet. It's less than 1% of the water resource and less than 2% of the land area that it takes to grow a conventional American diet. So as we approach situations where there's more people with less resources, um, these models transform that situation of scarcity into abundance in a big way with all the positive side effects of community and backyard gardening. Uh, and you can subsist off of this and provide an income for yourself as well, especially through the selling of seeds. And more and more as time goes on, um, there's a growing seed industry which um, has different types of interests in mind. The growers of seeds today, which are a big commercial combines, are growing only those seeds which are very satisfactory commercially. Therefore, we are getting seed now and plants that are terribly limited. Nothing is grown unless it produces a maximum quantity and quality to hell. Production could only keep up with demand through research. Great new harvesting systems and distribution methods had to be developed to bring these crops from faraway farms fresh to our tables. And so a rolling factory gathers together the goodness of nature and does it economically. Through science and technology, agriculture works newer and newer miracles. I want to speak very briefly about seeds and seed saving. Why should we save our seeds? Why? There are several reasons. One of the reasons, of course, is for us to get food. Okay? That's the, that's the overall, overall. But there are other underlying reasons why we should save our seeds. One is to renew our old age partnership with plants. We have lost our relationship with the plants completely. Two, to retain the control of our food supply. We have lost that. That one we have lost to the multinational companies. We don't produce what we want to produce. We produce because we have been told what to produce. And that is not what we need. We need food sovereignty and not food security. Saving seeds is our rights. Is it the same as this one? The, or the so one? these are some of the reasons why we should save our seeds and present this, all these reasons to our smallholder farmers, to the people that we work with, to our farmers, so that every farmer saves their own seed. I'm taking the seeds to Mozambique to grow there. The idea is to grow and have this food in our uh, land, things that we don't have. Okay, uh, what else do you have? Oh, what is that? Wait, what? When you step back and look at it and just look at the, the overall environment of the aggregate business, you see that there's a real effort at control. The response from that has been a huge uprising all over the world to save seed and a huge movement towards empowering people and communities. And the beauty of what Samuel and Paris are doing, the beauty of what seed savers around the world are doing, is they're keeping that in the commons. 
And the key to all this is kind of these decentralized networks of people sharing information and sharing seed. You know, sections of the United States, yeah. so we would sort of Northern California would break off with Oregon and Washington, you know. I think they have a name for it. They even got a flag ready, you know. The left, the left coast. The left, the left coast. Right back, I knew. Very cool. Well, congrats on the good work. Yeah. So welcome everyone to this very informal, open discussion about adaptation in terms of seeds and seed libraries. We thought one thing we could do would be to talk more about that. <coughs> what do you imagine as being adaptation in the context of a seed library? Yeah. Well, for me, local adaptation means that the seed is going to perform well given your conditions. Mm -hmm. However, moving forward with climate change, mm -hmm. we don't know what those conditions might be or what they might look like. I think part of the challenge we have is we're working with gardeners, so, and we're working with populations of people that are reskilling at all of this. As seed libraries and seed banks, we're in a unique position to serve as hubs, and you know, farming those seeds out to people, people who grow things in, in different regions and locations. You know, this is about local food security in changing times. Oftentimes we think in this culture that if I want to be involved in a sustainable food system, I go buy food from my farmer. But what's often left out of that conversation is growing it yourself. And by empowering yourself with that knowledge, you know, that's where the magic happens. You know, if someone were to set something like this up in every neighborhood or community garden, just one example, people would learn exponentially what's possible. And that's what builds a resilient community, is gardens. And that's the ultimate goal, is to, to relocalize and you know, make a more sustainable system where gardening and small-scale food production is recognized as an essential component. Running out of space. It's not a bad situation to have. I feel so lucky <laughs> to have all this and to have it be something that um, people in the community value too makes me feel like I'm a part of the place and have something to offer. You know, it's not just me doing this. Look at all these seeds, look at all this food, look at all this responsibility um, to take care of these things. You know, look at all the hands that have ever touched each one of these seeds throughout millennia to keep them alive. These are simple methods affordable by our farmers on how they, are, they can save their own seeds. And these are simple seed banks, very simple seed banks that are, have been created by our farmers. We trained them on how to save their own seeds. And of course, you can't tell farmers to go buy glass jars. They use what they have. Containers are very expensive. I think the best containers are glass jars. Mm. And you can, as you can see, we are still having plastic in our seed bank. Those farmers that are not able, they grow the food and we save the seeds for them here. Your seed bank should have the crops that you like eating. They have collected all our seeds everywhere and then later they will reintroduce our seeds back to us and sell us at very high cost and yet they, they took our seeds for free. We need to be sustainable everywhere. Food, uh, soil, money. You cannot be saving money here with compost and then losing the money with the seeds. So you need to raise your own seeds. So have a nursery, raise the crops that you need. Yeah. This is our nursery for raising our seedlings. Most people do not comprehend what a seed is. A seed is the most incredibly magical matter. Something has happened in a plant that has been growing in the soil, in the atmosphere. 
and that then something comes from the invisible world when it is in flower and enters the stigmata and what you would call a seed is born. You know, another benefit of these plants that we are saving seed for, they're bringing in pollinators. So dedicating a small amount of your garden to seed production, and you really only need about 3% of your garden area to produce all the seed you need for the next year. Sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes you're the only one doing these things, but someone's got to start it. So we'll go and we'll check out what the soil used to look like. This was essentially the type of pasture that we inherited when we started this garden. And you, you kind of realize what you're doing. You know, you're really kickstarting a uh, healthful, invigorating process, which is gonna heal the soil and regenerate the soil. And by opening this up and engaging with that work and using the tool as an extension of your body and feeling the soil through the tool, you kind of become a part of that. There's no separation. You're growing it and it's growing you. The craft of the garden is what the gardener uses to fulfill the art of the garden. The whole art is there and he is using it and forming it. It's timeless and when you connect to the soil, you're connecting to the past by honoring that. You're connecting to the present by being there in the moment and you're connecting to the future because you're creating um, hope and peace. It's, it's the most uh, rewarding experience. We look for money to get food. And the moment you, you grow your food and you sell it, you come back home carrying food from the market. So why don't we fast grow food sustainably? in our small area before looking for money to buy anything else. It is possible. You should plant your garden properly so that you consume almost everything that is in the garden. You will also use open pollinated seeds so that you will have continuous supply of food. You will not depend on agrovets to buy your seeds. Here in Gibiak, we process seeds ourselves. There's this quote, and I forget who said it, but the quote is something like, you tried to bury us, but you forgot we were seeds. And to me, that's so emblematic of the struggles of the small farmer and the campesino. You know, it's so, uh, so much a, um, a part of reality that these people face. And you just can't kill the spirit of these people whether it's the seed saving component or access to resources and water, the right to live, the right to have land, the right to have clean air, you know, you can't kill the human spirit. And that human spirit is um, probably the most appropriate thing that we need to engage with to actually overcome these challenges and to work together and stoke that fire. And the seed bank is that vehicle. Everybody has the responsibility of sowing a seed of change, starting with the seed that we grow. Well, I'm Matt, and um, I always look forward to every chance that you guys put on a get-together and a gathering. I just want to thank you guys so much for the efforts that you put in. What a tremendous opportunity we have to save the seed and share the seed. And, one of the, the, the most fun things for me about it is we're taking the money out of it. It's local. It's about as local as it gets. And it's bringing back that culture that for over 10,000 years we all had. And uh, we've never lost it. And it's in every seed. There's so much to learn from what each of us is doing. Um, I love that it's decentralized. And it's, you know, it's it, the network of decentralized communities doing this work is what's going to save us, I think. So thank you all for doing what you're doing and I look forward to the next time we get to meet.